Hey everyone, welcome back to By Devin. Today I'm going to be using the four new colors in the 4th of July celebration from IDT, or I dipped that. That first one was Firecracker. It is a gorgeous, solid blue. It is the perfect blue for 4th of July and red, white, and blue. And then we've got Grand Finale was the foils, and Punk is this red, fine glitter. And last, Pop It. Pop It is a bright white that glows. So I'm going to start by putting a layer of the poppets on all five of the nails so they can all have a gorgeous glow and there they are. And then I'm going to go in and do a little bit of kind of free handed color blocking. So I kind of want a red, white and blue um, diagonal stripe on this nail. So I'm going to put my base on the entire nail. My base liquids are a medium to fast dry time. If you have gels, this is a great time to break them out. Then I'm just using one of these little spoonies to kind of spoon on the punk where I want it on that top edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing with firecracker with the blue. I didn't use my tape here cause I don't want it to be a super defined line. Um, somewhere between an ombre and a super defined line. And then I just dipped it in to get that grand finale in the middle. I really was loving how grand finale was looking here. And I really actually, in hindsight, wish I had not done a second layer of grand finale, just because I got a lot more of those white glitter pieces in the middle. Um, and in the second dip, I got more foils. The foils are gorgeous just for this. Um, I wish I had kept with more of the white, but that's what I love about Grand Finale. You have two, almost three looks in one jar. You can go for more of those white glitters, which kind of look the way it is on um, the nail right now, or you can get more of the foils and get more of that red, white, and blue. Or you could try to get somewhere in between with some hand placing. If you have a gel, it'd be really great for that as well. So it's gorgeous, um, but I do wish I had had a few more of those white ones, but I didn't wanna do a third layer because then I thought it would be getting just too thick. So I'm gonna keep all of this excess that I have in my jar, and I'm gonna use that for an accent on the rest of the three nails. So I'm just dipping this into that excess to kind of get, um, it's mostly grand finale in here, but it has a few of the sparkles from punk and a little bit of the blue. After I got a good coat on there, I did dip it to get any of the rest of the nail into that poppets, just to make sure it's an even coat and there's none of the base that didn't get um, powder on it. And then I'm gonna cover this next nail with my base coat and I'm gonna use this excess again with my cupcake liner to just pour it around the edge. So it's just a little bit of a glitter and foil accent around the edge. I think it's gonna kind of be reminiscent a little bit of fireworks in the night sky. So that is the look that I am going for. Now I'm gonna do that to all three of these nails. I love these silicone cupcake liners. They kind of hold onto the glitter just enough that you can really not control exactly where it's going, but definitely have more control than if I was using that little spoon that you saw me using at the beginning, or if I was pouring straight from the jar. And because I did just want a, the smallest little bitty accent, um, I really wanted it to be pouring very slowly. So these silicone cupcake liners are perfect for that. And this extra that I had from my kind of freehanded color blocking for that pointer finger was perfect. Perfect. So I couldn't really pour it back into any of the jars because it was kind of a mix of all three. So I used most of it in this um, accent between this and the thumb. So it was a great way to not lose any powder. All right, so now I've got the accent on all three. I'm closing up all of my jars. And then I'm going to go through those last steps. I'm going to activate and do some buffing. Um, I did use mostly just my little pink square buffers just to get a nice um, smooth finish on there. Oh, I did put clear on each of them, especially with foils and glitters. Wanted to make sure everything was um, nice and protected before I buffed. So that's what you see happening now. Totally forgot about that step. <laughs> not in the, just in the narration, not in the actual video, because you can see I'm clearly doing it here. Um, 
the foils did run just a little bit, but I think that was mostly user error because I was not at all trying to be careful around them. Um, I kind of liked the way that it looked, getting just a little bit of that running color into the white on the accent nail, so I'm happy. Um, if you did want to have a completely no run, no bleed foil, you would just need to be more careful with your dip liquids or try a gel if you're able to do gel. Um, this would be a great time for that. So I'm going to use my stiff brush to get off all of my excess clear because I don't want these to at all be cloudy. And then I'm going to go into that buffing that I just started talking about earlier. So I'm going in with um, my activate here. And then I will do that buffing. I used mostly, like I said before, the little pink buffers, but I did pull out my file just on those foils where I had gotten a little heavy handed with my base. They were a little more um, bumpy than I like. And so the file took care of that. And then I also filed the edges of my press-ons to make sure that none of the dip got under them. I do run an e-file underneath my press-ons to take out some of the bulk, especially near the cuticle. I think it makes them live a little bit more naturally on my finger. So that has been really helpful. That was a tip that I got from one of my other nail friends and it was a great one. So if you are looking for something to help your press-ons feel a little bit more um, thin, definitely run an e-file under them. I do it mostly around that cuticle line and then on the sidewalls. And here we go with that second activate. I think that the second activate is critical to getting your top coat to harden quickly, but you do need to wipe it off, at least with my liquids, you do need to wipe it off with your alcohol. Basically about the time it takes to do all five of them, then I go back through and wipe with alcohol. Then I do a quick one, two, three with my top coat so that I don't contaminate my brush. And then I go back, as you can see here, and do a little bit quicker to get them all nice and shiny. I think that second layer of top coat is really what gets them shiny. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of a stamping accent. This is Clear Jelly Stamper 118. It's all about travel. So it has all of these silhouettes of people, but then also places. And it had a silhouette of Lady Liberty. Um, and and I was super excited about using that. I'm from Chicago, so you know, I was a little meh about New York. Sorry if you're from New York, but um, the Statue of Liberty is perfect for a 4th of July nail. I really failed though in filming this because you've got a great view of my ring light reflecting off of this stamping plate, but you really can't make out what the stamp is. So it's gonna be a great reveal at the end. So don't navigate away, we're almost there, I promise. You can see how great these nails looked. Um, this was the first time I'd used this plate. It was super easy to use. I was a little concerned because the lines are so fine, but they went on perfectly. I didn't have to redo any of these stamps. And then you saw when I first pulled out this, I used um, my clear jelly stamper. It's like this little pad of sticky pages. I got it with the summer book and it was excellent. It got them so clean. And there was the reveal, here they are. I am in love with this look. And here they are glowing with poppets at night. This has been by Devin. Like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, you can use Devin15 at I Dipped That. Bye, y'all.